My name is Kim Gajuni. I'm a general internist by training and currently an assistant professor of medicine at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. Uh, my clinical practice uh, and my research all revolve around obesity. So I think that obesity is vilified for a few reasons. There is the general perception of this lack of willpower and blaming the individual that it's all their fault. Why can't you control yourself? And as we're learning more that while that may be part of the situation, that it doesn't explain the entire situation. And so I think that there's sort of some real challenges uh, and increased risks that those patients hold. At the same time, I don't think that's a reason to deny services to people. Instead of seeing a new patient and walking in the door and being excited of how can I help you, you know, I think weight is a challenge. It's the same as race in a sense that when you walk in the door, you can't really hide your race, you can't really hide your weight. And as soon as that door opens, there's an immediate judgment before you even open your mouth on who you are as a person and how you got there. Then the walls sort of go up immediately and then you don't really connect with those people as a person quite as much because you can make that snap judgment. One of the ways that our brains sort of learn to process things quicker are by sort of assigning labels and by, based on our prior experiences. Okay, well, this is how I'm gonna think about this. But again, there sort of needs to be a check that <laughs> well, that doesn't necessarily apply to all people. So I think it's weighing some of those things that we do know of some of the increased risks, but then also thinking about the opportunity to really treat the person as an individual and really the benefits that you um, can provide to them. So I think it's a little bit of a checks and balances that needs to happen. Um, but often in that time pressured situation, a lot of that kind of flies out the window. I think the cultural norms in the U.S. and how we've really put value on thin, young, has an influence across all populations, including healthcare providers. We, as physicians, harbor similar influences or have the same type of influences as the general population. However, it makes a bigger impact since we actually have connections that impact directly on individuals' lives. Um, and so bringing in those sort of negative attitudes uh, towards your patients. Part of our creed is really you know, being compassionate and providing care uh, for everyone. Are we really addressing sort of that mission in medicine if we are harboring these negative feelings? And while some of those negative feelings we might not be able to go away, but if we at least give physicians tools to sort of handle and how to mitigate those potential effects on your patients, then you know it, it can be both a benefit to the physicians and the way that they practice, and then subsequent, the subsequent care that they provide for their patients. So my research was looking at how patients and providers uh, communicate with one another during patient outpatient encounters. We recorded interactions between doctors and physicians and then uh, listen to those audio recordings for different types of communication. So biomedical, which is the traditional doctor talk, uh, medications and whatnot. The psychosocial realm, uh, which is more about lifestyle, smoking, those type of factors. And then finally, rapport building, which I like to think of as the emotional connection between patients and their physicians. And so when we looked at those type of communications by the patient's weight, we really didn't find any differences in the biomedical and the psychosocial based on the patient's weight. However, looking at the rapport building aspect, that overweight and obese patients had significantly less amount of rapport building that their physician didn't engage in rapport building with them um, to the same extent as they did with normal weight patients. Uh, and really the dimensions of empathy, partnership, uh, self-disclosure where the physician reveals something about themselves that all of those things um, just didn't occur as frequently with patients who are overweight and obese. The doctors uh, are more likely to form an emotional connection with normal weight patients than they are with patients with overweight and obesity. This lack of rapport building uh, may lead to negative consequences for both actually patients and providers. So in prior studies, especially the idea of empathy uh, has been linked to things like increased patient satisfaction with their providers, that they are more likely to adhere to your recommendations. On the counter side for the physicians, um, when you 
uh, engage in rapport building with patients, uh, you actually are less likely uh, to burn out, <laughs> so you enjoy the interactions that you have with your patients, and you're actually less likely to be uh, involved in uh, medical litigation or um, be sued. Uh, and so I think that there's really I see it as a win-win <laughs> uh, situation for both patients and providers um, by engaging in that rapport building. I think uh, a lot of patients who struggle with obesity often have negative self-attitudes and so don't necessarily then advocate for themselves. So I think it's important for patients to be empowered regardless of what their size is, to really stand up and declare what your needs are. And a lot of your providers may be really un unaware <laughs> that they're even doing some of these things. And so I think uh, approaching them in you know, a positive manner and letting them know, hey, you know, I need X, Y, and Z, or you know, it hurt my feelings a little bit, um, you know, could you be some, a little bit more sensitive about that? If you have a good relationship, to really build upon that, to really see your physician as your ally. For some patients, they won't be able to build that relationship. And so, you know, if you're not getting what you need, you know, I think it's, do you think about switching? And uh, there is some evidence that patients with obesity actually switch doctors more often. Uh, and my hypothesis with that is that they're really trying to find someone who meets those needs. And while I don't want everyone to run out and switch their physician, I think it's first important to try to build that relationship with the person that you already have. But really, if you're so unsatisfied, and uh, I've had patients who come to see me that they absolutely dread going to their doctor because of the negative interaction that they are going to have or they anticipate having, that really, you know, that's doing a disservice to your own health. And I think time to find someone who really is going to help you through this journey. As far as solutions um, for students and trainees, um, you know, I think really for them being aware and having it be a part of their curriculum uh, to know what weight bias is. Do they themselves have these implicit attitudes? Uh, and then going about how do we build rapport, that communication skills side, um, which in medical school we spend a lot of time thinking about anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, um, but ultimately medicine is a very social profession. And so that's another area that we need to develop and being able to communicate and talk with people uh, I think is a really important skill and uh, needs to be emphasized in medical education. And then I think the, the final solution and challenge uh, is for practicing physicians. <laughs> Um, you know, it's a little bit more challenging once you're out in the field because you have a little bit less opportunity to do some engaging and learning. Um, but as a part of our field, you know, we're required to do continuing medical education. Um, and there are already some online programs out there for physicians um, to learn about uh, weight bias. Um, that uh, You can go online and take those courses and at least start familiarizing yourself with what the problem is, what the scope is. Uh, and then uh, other uh, continuing medical education on communication skills. A lot of these are free. <laughs> uh, and so really for physicians who you know, uh, engage with these patients on a regular basis, um, that, which is most physicians, <laughs> to really think about that as, as a part of your continuing training uh, and take advantage of those opportunities. I think a lot of people are looking for an answer and, or at least a solution or someone to work with that they feel they can trust. And I think that's one of the advantages of actually putting obesity as a medical diagnosis because then it falls within the domains of physicians. And while we're by no means perfect, I think that we do have sort of a, an interest in well-being and health of people and to really find solutions that do have evidence behind them when it's such an unregulated industry as it has been. There's really no one to stand up and advocate and say, hey, that's not safe for you. Or at least by now incorporating that into that world, perhaps we can take actually a stronger leadership role in trying to guide people on really what is you know, a, a good solution to at least try as a first step. Physicians have a lot of pressure and responsibilities put on them, especially primary care providers. And you know, most primary care limited to sort of a 15 minute visit. How do you accomplish all of the preventive, all of the counseling, all of the medical management of the chronic disease? It's so easy for things to kind of slip by the wayside really unintentionally. 
And so I think there are these system factors and really system level solutions that need to happen as well. You know, I think that there is an art to medicine in talking with people and understanding what their story is. And just by sitting and listening, you can often get a lot of that information that you don't really need X, Y, and Z tests for at times. Um, but some of that I think is being lost during the training that there's been a boom of technology and new tests and pushing that envelope. And well, I think that's definitely important, but it can't be by itself sufficient. And we've sort of swung, I think, too far in the other way, and we need to come a little bit back to incorporating some of that art back in.